Hi, I'm Josh Bell with the Miami Marlins. I wear NeuroGuard to help with strength and coordination when I'm in the weight room and help with balance when I'm on the baseball field. One of the most comfortable, reduces concussion, increases performance. You can't get a mouthpiece like that on the market. Not only is it a great product, it's super easy to use. I recommend it for any player at any age at any level. Thank you guys so much and go check out NeuroGuard Plus. NeuroGuard mouthpiece makes it easier to breathe while playing basketball. The unique design is not as bulky as any other mouthpiece and makes you feel safe in concussion. NeuroGuard may control my breathing while I'm riding. It stops me getting concussions while I'm riding. It's very easy to use, so go pick one up today. You know, I'm still doing stunts. And the, and the concussions I've got, and I feel much safer with that. I'm doing, I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing a whole lot better in the gym. So NeuroGuard Plus, and you know, once this one wears out, you've got a customer for life. Because I'm telling you people, NeuroGuard Plus is the way to go. And me, Mark Ash, says so. Parents, kids, coaches, Nero Guard. It's the future. Stay tuned. Brown right, motion, tailback slant. Let's put the women and children to bed and go looking for fun, all right? On one, ready? Goal 13! Goal 13! We take your lights are bright on Preview. Friday night, fall in small Texas town. Yes, People we'll take it for like <laughs> <malls to flame. laughs> Terry Bennett, Terry Bennett, Terry Bennett Greg Goodwin here. Yeah, Week four, four A right here on Sideline to Sideline, brought to you on your guard plus. That was just perfect timing right when we switched over to the soundboard. Uh, but uh, anyway. How's everybody doing this week? As already at week four, folks. I, I know I, I, I lead my shows off with how quick it goes by because well, how quick it goes by. We've got teams, you know, we got El Paso. They're in week two of district this week. All the, the mm -hmm. eight team El Paso 4A district out there. Grant's going to be doing a new show. Just, oh, I can't, Yeah, I can't wait to see On that. El Paso district? Yeah, the El pa oh. just the 4A one, awesome. the one that's 18. I don't have to go out there and interview people. Yes, you do. Well, you would have a problem going to El Paso, man. Uh, like every week, yeah. Go over to get some Blakes uh, over in New Mexico. Um, yeah, we have us go so to Nuevo Laredo, uh, Boys I'll Town. Never see you Cartel, again. Cadillac Bar. Oh, the Cadillac Bar in uh, Nuevo Laredo. Party Central, buddy. I don't think fifty-two-year-old Grant can do what twenty-seven-year-old Grant was doing. Well, try me. Well, no, I, I see it every Friday and every Tuesday. <laughs> well, you okay. can't. <laughs> You know, right my bluff. <laughs> All right, if this is the first time you're joining hey, I stayed up pretty late in Austin in the hotel. 10.45, dude. Watching my murdering shows. Dude, had you're a six so pack. weird. Like, I get what? that. Well, you had a six-pack and drank three and fell asleep. No, I drank all six. Ah, I saw and the then the, all the blood and murder kind of got me a little aroused. I don't so know how you stay. fall asleep to that. I mean, I, I guess I fall asleep it's to comforting, horror movies. I guess, so right? I, guess, well, I mean, like I said, I fall asleep to horror movies, so I guess there is some way to that. But yeah. anyway, uh, we were... Do you not get a little aroused? No. A little... Me neither. So I was just <laughs> making sure. Okay. Cool. Uh, we were down in Austin because we were watching some 4A football, which we'll be talking about. We were very impressed. 
overall with both, but especially with one, um, of course. And we'll do what we always do. That's review the week before, preview the week that is, and let's jump right into it. And let's talk about it. First off, um, as people always want to know, our food choices were amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oscars in Temple. Oscar store. It should even be. Outside of Temple. Yeah, it should, it's Temple, Texas. But yeah, no, it's, it's not. It's Oscar, Texas, dude. But I mean, they're, they're literally on their menu, it says Temple, Texas. So that's what I'm saying. Well, they're dumb. They don't even know where they're wow. at because it's Oscar, Texas. Dude, it's awesome. Oscar, um, yeah, it's good. Great, great environment. Uh, the atmosphere on a regular afternoon, the atmosphere was there. They even had a just random restaurant dog that came up and, you know, like, hey, dude, how's everything going? Um, they've got an outdoor music area that we've already talked about. We want to go in the off season and, and go check out a couple concerts. And then the food was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Those I had the chicken onion fried steak. rings yep. were as good as Lawaki. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, they they were good. The, everything was good. The sweet tea was perfect. I mean, it was just a great experience. I had steak. You had chicken fried steak. I had chicken steak. fried steak. Um, mm. I'm going to have sweetie pies this week. I'm so excited. Um, but, yeah, it wonderful food there. Then we went to the game. Um, we'll talk about the game. We Then Saturday got up, went and looked at the Capitol, held hands as we walked. We did not hold well, hands. We were in Austin. Nobody cares. And then <laughs> wow. I, had, I still – Okay, know, we did not hold I, hands. I know, this is, uh, just, I know it's weird to call this place underrated mm-hmm. because if you know about the Texas Chili Parlor, it's awesome. But I don't think that's one of the things that stands out for when you're telling somebody about Austin food – I don't think a lot of people bring that up because chili is a weird, a lot of people don't like chili in restaurants and things like that. Dude, this chili was amazing. Yeah, like, it is. Just don't make the mistake of getting the triple uh, X <laughs> hot like I did because I was hurting all the way back to Waco dude, at least. I, I have been, I have been with you through three and, and a lot of this is jokingly we're older, but I've been, with you through three hot challenges that you mm. just sailed through each one of them like they were nothing. I have never seen you say, I've got to stop eating for a minute because this is burning my mouth. Yeah. I was. thought you were about to call for a glass of milk. I mean, it was. Yeah. Uh, I drank like four things of Dr. Pepper. Yeah. And you're right. not, you don't usually do that when you're at a restaurant. Usually right. you're like maybe two drinks. Usually you're a one drink. But yeah, it, the food was good. Um, great trip. Now let's talk about what we went down to see because I'm going to tell you what. I thought. We were impressed with Austin LBJ back when they played Lampasas a few years ago, and that mm-hmm. kind of woke us up to the Jaguars. I am way more impressed with them this year. The yeah. offensive scheme and, and what they do offensively, it's not – And com- how they execute. Yes, it's not complicated. <clears throat> it's real they simple. They execute, and they've got tons of speed, and they've got size up front. And they th- and it all starts with their quarterback, Ali Scott, right? That dude – can throw dimes on a run. He can tuck it and go for 40 yards. I mean, and then, they, you know, Yamir Riley, the receiver, you get him in space and it's it's church, right? And then they've got that. How about the defensive tackle slash, or uh, linebacker, offensive tackle in the Bell kid? What was it? De- Demaje Bell? Number 52. Oh, my gosh. Well, dude, eight. that guy is a warrior. And I'm going to tell you what, when it gets colder and when it gets to the games that matter, they're going to flip him and play him as many snaps on defense. Mm-hmm. And he was dominating, dominating on both sides yeah. of the ball. I'll tell you the thing that I was most impressed with, what their quarterback does well. And and it's one of those things that not enough quarterbacks do well, but the great ones do. And that's simply throwing the ball where your receiver, when they're running those screens, can catch it in momentum. They're not having to fall back right. behind. They're not yeah. having to reach up. Everything he threw was right there. Mm-hmm. And that allowed those wide receivers with those blocking lanes beautifully open against a very physical Wimberley uh, oh, defense. Yeah. This yeah, is this... not a, a weak defensive team right here. No, they will hit and you. That 44 it, it, for Wimberley was a player. It, it's so funny because we had just talked about uh, one of our road trips. We always talking football and stuff. And we said, you know, you know, physic, the physicality of the game is just different this year. It's not less. It's just different. The way the game's taught, the way the pads are and everything. This game was an old fashioned. Looked like we were in 1980s for yeah. a, they were just, I mean, there were like back to back shots and all legal hits that we were just like, wow, that yeah. dude's getting up and, and he's going to keep playing. And, and, I'm telling you what, man, I it's still early, but I think this LBJ team might not be as dominating on the back end of their secondary. Of course, you had two D1 guys back right. then, and then you right. end up having another one that ended up being D1 too, who was a sophomore. But I think overall, 
offensively, what they do schematically, how well and efficient they are. And their defensive are. front their is defensive better. Fr- I think, yes, you're right. I think their defensive front. But I think this, I think LBJ dropped right back in the foray, and they're immediately one of my favorites. They're, they're better than what they were uh, before. Yeah, right? I agree. But I don't know if they're as deep, right? They weren't like, you know, bounds and bounds deep two years ago. Yeah. Right? But – uh, I think they were deeper a few years ago. There wasn't a lot of dudes suited up. So if you can get past that first platoon, I think that's where if you're Stephenville or whatnot, that you have an edge. And right? a team like Stephenville will have that because of right. The, I mean, they're a if you're 5A looking for, roster in 4A. Yeah, if you're looking for the Stephenville LBJ rematch, if you're Stephenville, I'd be worried because this this offense, this offensive it's line, and the, yeah, they're really good. But take comfort in the fact that you get them into the fourth quarter, you've got them out depth, I think, because there wasn't a lot of them. They were a lot like West Orange Stark, but just they got a lot of dudes start that are just really good football players, but there's not a lot of dudes on the sideline to come in and take that second, you know, those number two snaps. So yeah, that's if a, you're, that's you're a Stephenville point. or somebody like that, that's where you got them. But yeah, uh, LBJ 27, Wimberley 16. Wimberley did have depth. It didn't matter. I think it could have been closer to 35, 36 to 16. Well, and, and you know, the, the, there was a turn in the game where we had it, it you know, Wimberley was driving <laughs> after getting a, a stop at the one and then very, maybe the best drive Wimberley had all night. And then they fumbled the ball and then LBJ fumbled or threw an interception or something. And that, it felt like LBJ was about to, to the kind worm of, was going to yeah, turn. Right. And, and, and hey, give Wimberley credit. They, they held off. But I'm going to say this look, Cody Stover is amazing to watch run, but they've got to get, uh, they've got to get more dynamic on the passing side. That's going to be yeah. what keeps them from if they want to win state. And I'm not saying they can't win state with Cody Stover at quarterback, but he, He's gonna he he and, and yes yeah, some of it's LBJ but let's be honest it, his strength is not passing the ball yeah his, they're gonna need some type of deep threat right yeah well and, and you know and, and you and I are talking about it, you know I almost the exact same time of the year last year there I was in Wimberley for Wimberley Lampasas and the one th- and, and they've got some good receivers this year and a lot of this is you know we're still talking four games or three games into the season they're finding themselves out uh, but. Last year against Lampasas, whenever they needed it, third and eight, Noah Bird's on. Yeah. Third and ten, yeah. Noah Bird's on. They don't have that this year. And, and you can tell. But in saying that, man, it's all Stover on third and yes, long, and, third and, and medium. And, and he's going to end up, I mean, personally, first off, I, can he survive the season? Right. Now, he's not going to be fa- playing teams like LBJ that are as physical. But I mean, Navarro's a physical team. Laga Vista's a physical team that they're going to have their shots at him. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think they need to figure that out. You know, defensively, y'all, Wimberley did a lot of things right. LBJ just executed. Yeah. Like, it wasn't that Wimberley was out of position a lot or that they weren't ready to stick their head speed there. Speed will get you out of position. Well, and you said it best when we were at the game. Speed kills, but when you have blocking in front of speed, it double kills. Like, you oh, yeah, get, yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. Um, and, and so, again, really impressed with both teams. Both teams are going to play for a long time. But I'm telling y'all, man. As impressed as we were with Kilgore and as impressed we were with Bushland, LBJ, for me, early, the most impressive team I've seen in person. They're, they're up there for me. All right, how about Hereford, 26, Plainview, 16. Hereford's now 3-0, and man. I root against Hereford. The one time we have a show out there, they have to go 0 and 10. <laughs> and then since then, uh, no, but it, we joked about that. I think they went 1 and 9. We joked about this, but they went 1 and 9 because Coach Adam Naren said, hey, I'm going to take this group of sophomores and we're going to become something special. Last year, they surprised everybody, started out 5-0, and ended up 7-4. and and, and it looks like they're just going right off with that again. You know, and I know Plainview ain't the, the, the greatest team in the world, but still, they're winning, you know, 21 points, 21 points, 10 points. They're in games where Hereford's jumping out early and then basically keeping the other opponent at bay, and I'm very impressed with them. Yeah. All right. Salina eight, Gunner seven. It, no shock, right? No, I mean, like uh, we thought it Salina's would. big offensive line just leans on the smallest uh, Gunner uh, defense, right? All the way across one through eleven, and that's what ends up happening. Chapel Hill twenty-one, White House nineteen. Good win for Chapel Hill, man. Oh, very good win. You know, that's the that's they're the, gutting it out. Yeah, that's a big rivalry. Uh, you know, White House. 
Dallas is a really, really good 5A team, probably will make the playoffs. And, you know, all the jokes or frustrations with Chapel Hill and how when, you know, at times they can become turnover machines or they get to they get to the semifinals two years ago in the state final last year and they just kind of lay eggs. Yeah. Dude, when they're rocking, this team is still damn good. I think for some reason, maybe because everybody talked about how bad they got beat by Anna and also you you lost a couple good guys from last year, like Cameron Kelly and such. But, dude, this Chapel Hill team is still – a threat in 4A Division One, and as much as we love Kilgore, it wouldn't shock me that Chapel Hill beats them. Here. Yeah, I mean, they got the speed. They got the speed to hit the corners at any time on the best defenses in the state. Yep. I think Kilgore still has one of the best defenses in the state, and Chapel Hill could make their hay times against that Kilgore uh, defense. How about Fort Stockton, 56-24? Fort Stockton's uh, quarterback, Cash Norman, threw for 277 yards and three touchdowns, ran for 64. Fabian Silva, 65 yards receiving. Fort Stockton is now 3-0. and Threat out in Region 1, you think? You know, with that quarterback, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, and, Or the receiver. I mean, Fabian Silva is yeah. probably one of the best receivers in uh, uh, Region 1, if not the best. You know, they, they've the last couple of years, you know, they, they get into the playoffs and then they, again, kind of like we talked with Chapel Hill, partially because of who they play. Like two years ago, they got drummed by Glenn Rose in the second round. But like last year, they get beat by Perryton. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their worst offensive uh, performance of the year. They can't do that this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if they can get past that second round and that's kind of been their, what's held them back. Yeah, they could be a threat. Red. I mean, they, I'm not saying like Glenn Rose. Well, they're like Glenn Rose. I'm not saying Glenn Rose, but they're like Glenn Rose. They're not going to shock you or wow you until you actually watch play after play. And you start going, man, that the quarterback's hitting every spot. Even the drop passes or incompletions right. are good throws. I just feel like they need to find consistency defense against better opponents. They look, yeah, they look pretty consistent. Uh, going back, watching this game a little bit, I, I watched the first half, and the defense looked pretty good. But Pecos, you know, wasn't the most formidable yeah, yeah. offense. So uh, maybe, you know, that defense lined up well. Uh, didn't really allow many big plays at all yeah. uh, against that Pecos uh, defense so or offense. So I, I think Fort Stockton is what they need to do to at least keep them in mind for a Region 1 finalist. No, I agree. All right, where do you want to go next? Uh, just to to bring up, uh, you know, it's 3A Columbus, but Needville, man. You know, we know Columbus is great, and we know they, they're they going to make 4A teams look foolish at times. But, man, I really thought – I thought Needville was going to kind of sneaky make this a better game, and, and they just no. didn't. And it's, it's a little – That might be the narrative this year with Columbus just – Wiping the field with everybody yeah, until you know, late into the playoffs. Yeah, you, you're right about that. But, man, you know, they, they're 2-0. and oh, uh, They had only given up 16 combined points. Now, again, it was to Columbia and Livingston. But, and I wasn't expecting them to win by any stretch. But I thought if – They a, put up a little yeah, resistance, 42, right? 42-28 or something yeah, yeah. like that. And, again, credit to Columbus. Uh, hey, look at Brock. You know, uh, everybody thought that this could be a real big trap game for Brock. You know, coming into 4A, they took on Decatur in week one, and they, and they kind of throttled them and, you know, kind of beat them. I was surprised. Then they throttled Lake Worth, and Aubrey's a solid 4A team. We they got, got an eight-foot quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, six foot forever. He also plays defensive end. How big is he? Six, six five. Six foot um, five. And he's a really My solid goodness. quarterback. And, and Aubrey's a solid team. They're not a yeah. bad team. This isn't three of old. This is a team that regularly wins twelve ga or plays this 12 game. This game was close to the fourth quarter, right? And Brody Woods and that offense you know, stretches it out. But more importantly, that Brock Eagle defense mm -hmm. uh, shuts the door on Aubrey on a couple big drives in the second half. And I'm just saying, man, Brock has seamlessly transitioned into 4A way even easier than I – and I didn't think they would lose any of the first three games. I thought they would be closer, though, especially that Decatur yeah. game. I thought that Decatur game was going to be a one-possession game. So just kind of a – and also, again, the nod to Aubrey. We see Aubrey. They're going to be a they're going to be a tough out in that region this year. All right, here's a few quick hitters. Give me any of your uh, thoughts on these. Uh, Belleville, 6-2, Fort Ben Crawford. Zero. The no new shot. school, Crawford, yeah, right? No shot. Uh, Belleville's just doing what they do. And Belleville, Columbus coming up in two weeks. Uh, not this week, but next week. And we will be at that game. We will be We've at that game and in Columbus. So uh, hope to see you somewhere in Columbus if anybody 
anybody from Columbus or Belleville listens, we'll shake hands and say hello. Um, Stephenville, 45, Godly, zero. Any shock there? Godly? No. Okay. Uh, Carthage, 58, uh, Liberty Isle, 20. I don't know if it's because everybody's really high on Liberty Isle, and now that they're in 3A and they've got a new coach, and it feels like they've got they're, – they're turning the program right, which they are, and that's – kudos to them or because Carthage hadn't played since Kilgore but a lot of people are trying to make that like hey this game could be closer than no, we think no we never thought that you, you and I literally said that last week on the show like no this is going to be ugly and it's not a knock on Liberty Island. first off Carthage is still Carthage folks right second of all they lost and they had a week to think about that yeah I bet every Carthage Bad Bull- combination well I bet every Carthage Bulldog was so ready Friday because I guarantee you the last Eight practices have been hell on earth for them because oh, of that absolutely, kill board game. Absolutely. And so that, I, I think people got caught up into that, but good good win for Carthage. They're back going again. All right. Western start 35, La Vega 27. Is Western start back? I I mean, yeah. They're starting to think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, look, you and I have said this about La Vega. The thing that we were worried about was, and their quarterback it has a young quarterback. Uh, Salina fans say that he's going to be special, and I trust him, but he's still a young quarterback. Right. And so Trying to figure out their offense. If that you get a out- defense like West Orange yes. Stark has, but, uh, tough to move. But the it's ball. the offense for the West Orange Stark uh, that's must well, yeah. Yeah. that are yeah. shocking me because you know we had this discussion last week. Even when Jack Dallas was quarterback, they won and they were awesome. But it wasn't like wasn't throwing for four thousand yards and seventy touchdowns like some of these schools are. They are consistently hitting the thirty point mark against at least competent defenses. I know La yeah. Vega isn't the same defensive they were five years ago, but they're still a competent four A division. You know, right. and they're scoring thirty five points. I'm very impressed. I'm now mad that we have not gone to see West Orange start now. Well, we will. We'll get to them this year. All right, Malakoff twenty nine, Madisonville twenty eight. This tells me how special Malakoff is, and damn, if Madisonville is not so much better. From the last two years, they've been a really, really good football team. Madisonville, with a chance to win against Malakoff, you take the A's out of it, and Malakoff, for small schools, is one of the top five to ten teams from 4A down. Well, and yes, 100%. Right, and Madisonville had a chance – in this ball game, oh, they didn't just have a chance. They they outplayed uh, yeah. Malakoff from beginning almost to end. You're you're talking Phillip about Green and company, man. And, yeah, dude. And, and this is why it's tough. This is why it's tough to beat a team like Malakoff, though. You got to take when you have your chance. You have to make them. They had a chance to make it 31-21 with a field goal that basically salts it away. Mm-hmm. They missed, and you know how it is, man. When you give Mike Jones a life after death, yeah, don't do that. Now, in saying it's like that, giving Tom Brady the ball with two minutes left, and this is a right? perfect ex- up three. You know you're going to get beat. This is a perfect example because Mike Jones did not play well. He was eight of twenty, mm-hmm. but. Four of those completions were when they needed him the most. When and, they made and Mike Jones just knows how to find the sticks. He falls forward for ten yards every time. Like you just cannot scheme the game out of uh, Mike Jones. And, and when we were talking about this game last week, and I kept saying I thought Massville had a chance. I, it, it, you know, and then this was on the three A show, but it it, it kind of came off like I was saying I didn't I didn't think Malakoff is good. I just think Madisonville's, if they can put it together consistently when it matters, they're one of those teams that you and I will be knowing, hey, they're good, and everybody else is going to look up when they're in the region semifinals and go, well, how did they get there? Well, we've been trying to tell you now. Right. You yeah. and I have been, you know, we saw them do the same thing against Columbus two years ago. Yeah. And then, yeah. But they went down early yeah. uh, by a few touchdowns then, to Columbus and then came back. And chipped away at it, yep. but this team's way that's almost the same team, yeah. By the way. Outside and, of a couple, but they're guys. all seniors, yep. yeah. All right, Glen Rose 44, Brownwood Jeez. 16. I gotta say, I know I said this last uh last week, Glen Rose is one of the most impressive teams that I've seen so far this year in class 4A. Uh, you know, Glen Rose scored on their first seven possessions, their quarterback, Canyon Evans, went 27. Of 35 for 327 yards passing. Right there, my friend, is a quarterback rating of 125 plus. Almost the exact same score and almost the exact same way the Saints beat the Cowboys. Glenn Rose started early. Right. 
Brown would move the ball okay in their first couple possessions, couldn't get touchdowns. And Glenn Rose said, all right, that was fun. We're out. And, and you know, you talk about and uh, Josiah Grunway, 11 catches, 147 yards. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Glenn Rose on both sides of the ball, especially offensively, it, it, even defensively, is I'm not going to say the fastest team out there, but they are the quickest team. And you put them against East Texas, West Texas, South Texas, Region 1, Region 2, Region 3, Region 4, and Glen Rose is the quickest team out there. Their little receivers get out in the zone yep. and to just find the soft spot, get a little space. They're, and they're juking, gone. jiving, ducking, and they are hard to stop. And Kenyon Evans is really accurate Dude, Glenn with the Rose, football. Every... You can put him on the move, mm -hmm. and he's going to put the ball on a dime if you give him time in the pocket, his receiver is going to come back to him. He's going to put the ball between the numbers. And this is just, I'm telling you, Glenn Rose has the perfect recipe to make it to Arlington. Well, you know, this is a Glenn Rose. This is what they do. They have a quarterback every four years. It's just, he, you see him as a sophomore and you see that growth. And speaking of sophomores, a lot of these guys were the sophomores that had Carthage beat two years yeah. ago, and then the fumble. They will eventually be called the fumble, and, and and those guys they're hardened now, man. These are seniors yeah, now, dude. and and they're 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 and their fun. defense is is fun to watch. Yeah, their as defense well. isn't gonna you know they're not gonna go. They out string there. it out though. They set you know they set the edge. Yeah, and but, they, but besides, they cut it back up in front and then, you know inside, and then the linebackers yeah, fill in. They're not gonna go and, out there though and go like in five possessions you you get negative thirty yards and they're gonna no, have no, twenty no, no, sacks. No. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna force you to earn every yard. And again, just like in this and game, you're playing keep up. Because, exactly, the, because their of what offense. their offense is so doing. It's a, it's a deadly combination that Glenn Rose has going right exactly. now. Exactly. All right, Gilmer, 24, Kilgore, 22, in what is basically the game of the week, right? Gilmer took the lead with a minute 26 left in the game on a Julian Butler touchdown run. Kilgore then ran the kickoff to the Gilmer 45. Two, two, two plays later, got the ball to her seven-yard line. A Kilgore player went down with a cramp and an official, the officials ruled a 10-second run, clock runoff because of that injury on offense, right? Mm -hmm. And the game was over before Kilgore could attempt the game-winning field goal. That's tough, What dude. a classic game, though, right? That is tough. I mean, Gilmer, back-to-back -back weeks have kind of not really controversial, but weird things happen to them, right? Yep. I mean, they're, you know, last week against Chapel Hill, they're down there with under a minute left, and they throw deep into uh, Chapel Hill territory and the lights just cut off and they didn't know during the middle of the play and they didn't know if they were going to allow the play, but they did. So just that, that was weird. the right call though, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. Both, I, I think both of them are the right call, um, but it's just so weird that Gilmer gets the, <laughs> gets yeah. in a game that's like that, but back big back win weeks. for Gilmer, man. Their backs were against the wall starting out early, right? They were winless. They're taking on just, a Kilgore team that was one of the most impressive teams that we've seen so far uh, against Carthage. That defense looks not even penetrable, right? Yeah. I mean, and Gilmer finds a way to gut out a win. Oh, I, I, you know, again, this is one of those games where you don't take anything away from Kilgore losing, and you can even make the case that they probably win. They still have to complete the field goal. We know all that, but I'm just yeah. saying, this, this is, you know, for for a Kilgore fan, I feel for you. For us, the the middle of the road, just watching the ball, that was awesome. Yeah, was and just, Kilgore, you're going to be okay. I trust love, me. first off, Gilmer, Kilgore, Chapel Hill, and Carthage. I think y'all need to make a, an agreement that if y'all are not in district, y'all must play each other every year because yeah, when y'all four play each other, it is some of the best round-robin football you get in non-district. And yeah. this, this showed that again. All right, Seminole, 44, Sweetwater, 7. Seminole's quarterback, Holmstrom, does again. Those are two. 100 yards, Stephen Davis, seven catches for 71 yards. Seminole's rolling right now. Yeah, you know, again, you know, we we thought that Sweetwater was going to be better when they moved down, but this is kind of expected. I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm still a little surprised that the 
uh, and this is more for the three A show, but I'm a little surprised that the, the the Sweetwater offense has struggled. But we keep saying with Seminole folks, they're real. This is a legitimate team that's going to make some waves in the playoffs out there. And Wyatt Holmstrom, you know, he's not going to have always the pretty numbers. But man, whenever again, he's one of those. Whenever they need him to make the play, he seems to make the play. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for review of week three. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we preview week four. Plus, we have Coach X, though it's a little bit different this time. I'm talking you, man. I'm really worried about him. I kind of really worried about what he's going to do. But anyway, we'll talk about all that. We come back right here on Sideline to Sideline, the 4A edition. Hi, I'm Josh Bell with the Miami Marlins. I wear NeuroGuard to help with strength and coordination when I'm in the weight room and help with balance when I'm on the baseball field. One of the most comfortable, reduces concussion, increases performance. You can't get a mouthpiece like that on the market. Not only is it a great product, it's super easy to use. I recommend it for any player at any age at any level. Thank you guys so much and go check out NeuroGuard Plus. NeuroGuard mouthpiece makes it easier to breathe while playing basketball. The unique design is not as bulky as any other mouthpiece and makes you feel safe in concussions. NeuroGuard may control my breathing while I'm riding. It stops me getting concussions while I'm riding. It's very easy to use, so go pick one up today. You know, I'm still doing stunts. You know, in the concussions I've got, and I feel much safer with that. I'm doing, I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing a whole lot better in the gym. So NeuroGuard Plus, and once this one wears out, you've got a customer for life. Because I'm telling you people, NeuroGuard Plus is the way to go. And me, Mark Ash, says so. Parents, kids, coaches, NeuroGuard. It's the future. Stay tuned. Friday night, I'm officially saying it this week, Grant. I'm 1,000% worried about Coach X now. Are you? Why is that? Well, let me just read it. So Coach X didn't give us any picks. He just gave us a diatribe. He said, guys, I have no picks this week. You see up here in the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of stuff to do and not a lot of service or internet. You wouldn't think that was the case in the hippie capital of the world, but yet here we are. Speaking of, I, I know he was going up there for the blockbuster, but again, he traded that in. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like we know the type of guy he people he likes to be around. Mm-hmm. Why does he continually put him in bad himself in bad situations? I don't understand. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Maybe he could get down here at least. We could send him to Kerrville, be around some Texas hippies. Yeah, right? those are cool hippies. I enjoy those. The yeah. music festival folks. Those are awesome yeah, people. Anyway. But- I don't know, man. The guys, you know, I'm telling you, he's he's lost. I've told you that while selling some solar panel to reducing electric dune buggy to some dude named Larry Garcia, no mention, no relation to Jerry, but I was like, come on, there has to be. He said not. He said no. But Jerry somehow was related to Merv Griffith. He then offered me what he told me. What? Griffin? Griffith. Griffith. Yeah. Merv Griffith. The old. He said Griffin. No, it says Griffith. Oh, okay. I'm speaking. I'm, I'm, I'm reading it. Okay. Well, I was reading it too. I thought he said Griffin. No, Griffin. Well, he probably he, he probably sends us two different ones. Hopefully, Merv he finds. was not bad. Not a bad dude. Oh, did you know? Did you know Merv? Yourself? I watched Merv oh, yeah. Griffith when I was little. Yeah, when I had to go to my like, grandparents' house. I've only house. seen him on VHS tapes. He he then offered <laughs> VHS. Me, he then offered me what he told me was a corn dog. <laughs> Oh no. No. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, okay. No, no, it it didn't go where I thought it was going. This must have been some hippie slang for Mary Jane, because I don't remember the last few days. I will be back next week (laughs) week with my usual insight of the top games in Texas. I gotta get back here. If you're driving down the PCH and you see a guy with a big X on his shirt that says Grant is a douche, please give me a ride. What the hell, man? Where 
where'd we go wrong? <laughs> I thought we were friends. I, I'm telling you, dude, you don't remember back when I when you were reading these, he was always attacking you. And that's the whole reason you made me start reading them. Because you know he's attacking me. I'm getting offended by a guy that's smoking corn dogs. And I still don't know if that's With the same thing. Larry <laughs> Garcia. Garcia. Not cousin Not to Jerry, Jerry Garcia. Garcia, but Larry <laughs> Garcia. Larry Garcia. <laughs> Sounds like you're hanging out in Del Rio to me. You're not in the Pacific oh, Northwest. Man. Oh, man. You're right. on the uh, Mexican <laughs> Coast Highway, oh, right? God. 90. I've, Is it 90 that I runs so. from uh, I forgot to tell you something. Del Rio, Uvalde? He's not in the PCH, man. We can go down right now to Brackettville and find him. Bracket, <laughs> talking something in Alamo Village, I which to, I think is closed. He didn't even know that. I forgot to tell you something. What? This is kind of all fair stuff, but we talk about this stuff on there. Uh, we have booked for mm -hmm. wife's birthday, Tara Linga. Oh. We're staying at the Stargazer TPs for three nights Ooh, in February. Nice. Yes, yeah, we're nice. excited. Uh, we well, it's actually the last week because we had to go because, as you know, you, you don't want the moon. That's the one time you don't want yeah, the moon. Yeah, you do not. So want we the had moon. to look up the moon, and, yeah, and so yeah. for her birthday, unfortunately, it's going to be a full moon. But the last weekend of February, first weekend, of, like March first, is on a Saturday. Uh, no it's, moon. It's no moon. Oh, so. dude, those yeah. stars out there! And we're I'm going to give you a uh, little professional advice, right? Because I been down several yep. times um <clears throat> when you get out to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night your teepee take a stick or something to beat the ground because rattlesnakes yeah. are crazy well, and out that's, there, we decided not to bring studio dog just to not have a yeah issue. yeah you don't want that but we are going to do the river crossing uh -huh. we looked in bokeas yeah we looked into the jose falcons bunch of youtube videos on that and stuff it's it, really it, cool it, you're gonna it, ride donkeys we're, over. yes we're gonna ride the donkeys oh, over. we're excited awesome. we're excited anyway let's now get into class four a week four we'll start back out in east texas because we talked about those round robin games and we've got another one this week you've got Carthage at chapel hill look we know the names man jet surratt for Carthage. kj edwards the running back maybe one of the most just he's electric he just looks like a d1 it looked back. like at one point he put the game away against that 60 Car yard uh, touchdown Kilgore, yep. yeah and uh yeah by the way good point though but we need to make comments of that Kilgore special teams kickoff against Carthage, it looked like they were gone. Big kickoff gets them back in the game. Against Gilmer, they're out. Big kickoff gets them back in the game. True. That's that true. kind of stuff that'll pay off come playoff time. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, in this game, I think this is going to be another slobber knocker. I think it's going to be a one-possession game. I just don't see Carthage losing twice in the non-district. Well, look, uh, Demet uh, Demetrius uh, Brisbane – Quarterback for Chapel Hill, Ricky Stewart, you know, running back. The, those are the household names, right? In mm -hmm. class four A. And by the for way, Chapel they've Hill, better at but defense. I Carthage, think, that Carthage defense will show up yes. and frustrate Chapel Hill's offense. I right, look, there's one thing speed will beat a lot of defenses. Speed will not beat a Carthage defense when they're getting penetration because I know, uh, look, Kilgore. Had to pull and Kilgore's offense is pretty darn good. Yeah. And they had to fight tooth and nail for every yard against this Carthage defense, you know? So I, this Carthage defense is going to win this ball game. And uh, I think KJ Edwards is going to, I'm not going to say run uh, hook just crazy over this Chapel Hill defense, but he's going to have a nice uh, stat line. On uh, when you re crack the paper on Saturday, I think Carthage offensively has the ability to run the football and play really good defense, and it's going to frustrate the bejesus out of Chapel Hill. And Carthage wins this game by seven to ten points. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time these two teams played since they were in the same district two uh, realignments ago. Um, so it's kind of unique to get them playing. They yeah, haven't played a cool. lot. I think it's going to be a really good game, I, but I'm like you. I, I just think Carthage, Car, you know, and again, now if they come out and Jets rat starts throwing interceptions, all bets are off. Uh, but I just think that Chapel Hill does not have the Kilgore defense to exactly. force yeah. Jets rat throwing into those little uh, stupid throws in the flat yeah. where he's just throwing up his back foot. Exactly. It's not going to happen. Belleville and Hitchcock. Yeah. Man, Hitchcock, this says it. This is a great game on paper. Hey, Belleville better watch out. Hitchcock can beat them. Yeah, I think. I don't know. Here's here's my take on it, right? Belleville's got uh, two running backs or three running backs in D.D. Murray, 
uh, Isaac and Ricky uh, and Ricky uh, Kendrick Turner, and they got the best defensive player in maybe six A and down. I and think DJ I Sanders, think the right? best defensive player in the state right. of Texas. Period. Bar nine. Yeah, I, I in Hitchcock is very athletic in the skill positions, more athletic than what Belleville is. Oh yeah, by but far. you think that Hitchcock can win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Oh, no, and that's why they won't win. I, I wasn't, right. I wasn't right. making a procl- proclamation that they're going to win, but I'm saying they can win this game. This is not a game that if Hitchcock beats if, Belleville, if, if, if I'm going to be shocked. Belleville does not bring their A or B game, yeah, Hitchcock can. Oh, I, I think are, Hitchcock can beat Belleville's A game. I don't think they will, but I think they I don't, can. I don't think they can. I, think, I don't. I have no just problem with because that. I don't think they had the horses up front. We saw the oh, horses. I, agree with you. I think that's I what mean, that's going to. Columbus gonna owned them up front yeah. last year. Belleville up front is as good as what Columbus was last year, and I, I think uh, Belleville will control this game in the trenches on both sides. And I think Belleville. Um, I'm not going to say skates, but wins by seven to. 14 points. I, I think like Bell, I think Belva wins by about a touchdown. I, I think that's a real good uh, mm-hmm. thing. I, I again, uh, if, if Hitchcock jumps on him early, that's where you Belleville has to start. Well, to, yeah, know. just because Belleville's offense, but I don't think yeah. that Belleville defense lets that happen. We'll have to see. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm interested in these next two weeks. Oh, it'd be a fun I'm game. So interested in these next two weeks with Belleville because it is them. And, and I know Hitchcock and Columbus, and we're seeing with Columbus, especially, it doesn't matter. They're 3A, but the takeaway you got from the Gilmer game, even though they beat Silsby and West Orange Star, two very athletic teams, but the takeaway they took from that Gilmer game is we need to see more of that before the playoffs. And I love that their schedule, that's what they did. Yeah. Uh, and I love that the, these two games are on their schedule. I think it's going to be a fun one. Here's another fun 4A game that's kind of gotten lost in all the the the, all the other ones. Uh, and that's Salina versus Franklin. I mean, oh, yeah. this is, first off, this game might be over in 30 minutes. Two heavyweights, man. Two heavyweights that both want to lean on you. And both I think physical- you call it mashing is what you yep. refer it to, mashing, right? And- we'll mash with you. Franklin uh, says we'll mash with you. Solana says we'll match with you too. Let's and, see the best man. Exactly. And <laughs> the you best know what? man wins, right? Franklin, you know, beat China Spring. Franklin beat Lorena. Yeah. Um, I like Salina in this game, but I'm gonna tell you what, this is a one possession. I almost want to say one point. It, it wouldn't shock me if it's a one point. This is gonna be a fun. I almost went to this one. I'll talk about the game because again, we'll explain it when we get to the game, but I almost picked this one. But I wanted to go to the other one because I, I need to see a couple. Th- I, this is to me one of the best four A three A games of the year. Oh yeah, it, it's going to be fun. Look, I, I I think Franklin can match Salina for a while because uh, Franklin is that good. Oh yeah, but Salina's defensive front is just nasty. They are nasty, and their offensive line is they're huge. They are huge, and they're not just fat dead weight. Oh God, that, no, I no. mean they are. Really, really good. Six and foot I, five, I, I think that's a lot for a smaller school like Franklin to to stand up to for four quarters. It just it's going to wear on them a little bit. But the thing is, Franklin wears on people. That's that that's their mo. That yeah. is you know let's let's play big boy ball. Get in there, hit me, hit me in the nose a few times. Let me hit you and see who's standing in the fourth quarter. And it's usually Franklin. This is another game where Salina likes to do that too. So it's going to be fun. I think Salina, just with their depth and their size on both sides, is going to give them the edge. And I think Salina wins by one, maybe two touchdowns just because of the size. I think, I mean, Salina is almost 5'8, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, again, you know, this isn't, this I mean, isn't about uh, so a Franklin on. is not scared to play them. No. And they're playing up almost two divisions. Yep. And now I, I, I think the thing. People that see Salina that I've talked to go, man, you know, Gutierrez and Williams and that offensive line, but dude, that quarterback, Bo Bentley, he just, oh, yeah, he's, he's not going to be, you know, we've said this on some of the other shows. He, he's, he, he, he's a bigger version, but he kind of reminds me of that Mike Jones, Jack Dallas, where he's always falling forward. Mm-hmm. He'll make the throws when he need to three throws might look terrible, but then when it's third and nine on the last drive, he's going to thread the needle. If well, he needs he's the to. kind that just gets you first down. Yes. Right. And, he um, wins third down. He wins third down. Exactly. I think this game is higher scoring than what people think, but I, I oh, like, yeah, I do. Too. I like Salina winning a 49 42 type it game. It just so happens that uh, Franklin's strength plays right into Salina's strength. Yep. And I that's agree. the one thing, right? But no matter what happens, as long as Franklin comes out of this, 
they're still a contender for the state title to me. All right, Columbus and Madisonville, man. This Madisonville. is tasty on two different ways. A, because Madisonville is a really good 4A. B, really three ways. B, we saw this game two years ago and was impressed with both teams. Uh-huh. But also because Madisonville just got beat by Malakoff by one point, it gives us our first calibration yeah. of – two of the top teams in 3A Division One that we think have a chance to play each other in in Arlington. Uh, and so yeah. we get that. I, I like that di- di- uh, dynamics about it, too. Yeah, I mean, Madisonville's coming at you with Ty Williams, Philip Green, right? Uh, a really good offensive line. It's gotten just better and better and better yep. over the last few years. Their defense has gotten really, really good. Uh, we know what Columbus is with Showell at quarterback. And... Uh, uh, Greenden, uh, great, yeah. Uh, Ringden, I mean, I said Greenden, Rick, yeah. Grayson Ringden, Grayson Ringden. God, I went dead. I mean, that guy is turning out to be the X factor of all X factors in all of the Texas high school football, at least at and, and 4A. We, we, and we talked and about who can stop him, who can stop them. I don't know. Madisonville will, uh, Madisonville, I think, will be the best team that Columbus has faced all year. I still think Columbus will win this ball game, but I think Columbus will get his best test to date. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally agree. And I think next week they'll get their second. But I mean, that they, they built this, you know, schedule really well. Oh, yeah. Where, where you know, you, you got Columbus or Columbus, you got Quero, and then LaGrange and Needville kind of allows you to kind of play out some other guys and figure things out. And now, between now and you know, the end of the season, the big boy football starts. Yeah. Uh, I feel so sorry for Rogers in two weeks, no matter what happens the next two weeks. They just, <laughs> well, we're not going to think that far. Ahead. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just thinking saying. ahead to Columbus and Belleville in Columbus that we're going to be, at. I'm excited about I that. I cannot wait for that game. I we think, got rooms reserved. Yep. We got rooms reserved. Right, everywhere. Awesome. We I got a think, place to eat. Well, that's your job, dude. Find it. Oh, okay. I still, maybe I, we'll, uh, check out Jeremy, our buddy. Yeah. Jeremy. Can, uh, you know what? We need to say Jeremy. Have one of your family members that are left over in Columbus to make us a home cooked meal, and we'll pay for your plate. Jeremy. There you go. <laughs> he'll he'll fall for it, even though it's free. Jeremy will fall for it. I like. I'm like you. I like Columbus in this game. I kind of think it plays out like it did when we saw it two years ago, where Madisonville yeah. will do enough to keep the game close. I don't think Madisonville will fall behind like they did in yeah. that first game. Like that, you know, they might fall behind, but not by two or three. Or maybe touchdowns. that's just what Columbus does. I think this now. is a blow for blow thing. Yeah, I, I think it could be too. All right, let's go out to West Texas. We got Canyon West Plains versus Bushland. This is going to be a sneaky game. You know, West Plains started off the season kind of with a dud, but since then they've bounced back. Of course, we saw Bushland, a, a great 3A Division One team. But I do think that this is one of those classics where I think Bushland will end, and I know they beat, uh, West Plains last year, I think it was like 49 to 41 or something like that. Mm-hmm. I, I think being in Bushland and and I, I think they can win. I just think West Plains is going to outdepth them in this one. I like Bushland. In I this have one. no problem with that, dude. I, I think I've gone Bushland back and forth. I'm defense. really impressed with that. And I know Estacado has now lost two games in a row. And it's not that they beat Estacado, but, you know, West Plains, first off, we realize now that Seminole lost. You wish it wasn't 56 to 21, but we've talked about Seminole. They're the real deal. And for them to throttle Lubbock Estacado 38 to 7, I was impressed with. I, I'm torn on this game, I'll admit. Yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from with West Plains uh, uh, winning this game, but I think Bushland is going to force West Plains into being a one-dimensional team. Defensively, that Bushland – you saw how Bushland can just oh, control God, the line so of physical. scrimmage, right? Hey, you want to have a comparison? So we, mm-hmm. we saw uh, mm-hmm. one guy for Canadian really do something, uh, Juan Dominguez. Mm-hmm. Another guy just last week after an op- after playing Bushland, and he didn't do a lot. He had 200 and something yards and two touchdowns. And, and we talked about, like, you can – Great offenses can look bad against really good defenses, and we kept saying that that we thought that was going to happen. So you're right on that part. Yeah. All, All right. right. La Vega and Brownwood. Uh, look, I'm not going to say Brownwood's overrated being in the rankings week after week, but they've gotten pantsed, right, last week by Glen Rose. Uh, La Vega's not as good as Glen Rose, but I think La Vega's too speedy for um, Brownwood's defense. Well, you know, our, our whole issue with Brownwood offensively was the same thing last year. Uh, when I call was not on the field, their offense was not even good. Now, I know Carson Noe is back, Trey Mosley. I think 
Mosley was the one that was hurt last year. And they've got some decent pieces, but it's the same thing. Offensively, they have struggled. They they they're one and one, and yet and they've yet to score more than eighteen points. Yeah, uh, they scored seventeen in their win against Wall. They scored sixteen in their loss to Glen Rose. Um, both of these teams have started off the season not where they've wanted. I know La Vega, you know, hasn't is not. You know, they lost last week and, and they struggled the week before, but they've looked better. Like their offense is right there. And, and I just, I think La Vega is just a better team right now. I think they might win this game by 14 points. Yeah, I, I totally agree. All right, China Spring and Springtown. This is a game you're going to be at. Yeah. So it, it, for everybody next week, there will not be the traditional three sideline to sidelines that we record on Tuesday night. There will only be one. And that's because you are out of town mm-hmm. and I'm going to be going to uh, Springtown, China Spring. But what we're going to do on that day, on t- next Tuesday, we're going to have a show, but it's going to be one show. And then I'm going to have like Chris Welch from Bushland Falcon Media. And I'm going to have a couple coaches on that I have shows with. And maybe I'm talking to some other coaches. We're going to do like we did. We did the same. Probably get Matt Diggs to come on. Maybe even try to get Step on and, and just kind of reset where we're at in the season. Mm-hmm. But since you're not going to a game, I'm going to go see China Spring and Springtown because I want to see the new quarterback. If we all remember Springtown started off the year uh, kind of with a thud and they got beat and we were like, wow, man, that, they're, they're going to struggle this year. We thought they were supposed to be good. And then Kane Hill comes out and starts fully. Now he had played He's a freshman, right? Sophomore. sophomore he he okay. played a few snaps in the first game they were rotating i guess they just coach Hewlett decided hey we're going to run with him the rest of the year and they shocked Graham, and they shocked Graham last week or you know two weeks ago now uh he went 14 of 17 190 yards two touchdowns he ran for 100 yards and three touchdowns in his very first varsity start against a good solid physical Graham team they continued that last year by uh throttling kennedale 34 to 17 uh, I think that this is a game that at the beginning of the year I'd have been like, oh, you know, China Spring will probably win comfortably. Now I don't know. I I, think, I got China Spring in this one, but I think it's close. I, I I'm kind of going. I, maybe it's because I'm just I'm happy to be going out there, and I, I I tend to I tend to to value the home field advantage. I think Springtown's going to come away with a win in this one. I, I think that it's going to be really really close. I, I think China Spring China Spring is good, but this is not China. Spring spring of a few years ago this is not the unbeatable cougars this is a really good team that any given night can beat anybody else but on a given night they can be beat by anybody else I mean, you know springtown's not unbeatable either oh no exactly right? but, mean, but i'm just starting saying, a sophomore quarterback and but, as good as he is you get some pressure but you know i don't even know what for all we know china spring might be starting a sophomore because yeah, they could be I, I don't I, i've got china spring in a close one right. you've got Spring kind of spring close one. So that'll be a fun one to watch. So both teams are going to be really good this year. And I think that's the bigger thing. By the end of the year, both of these teams, I think, are going to be humming. All right. Our last one of the night in the 4A preview is uh, Waco Conley versus Alvarado. Man, uh, Conley's been tearing it well, up gonna, so far. Uh, Their quarterback, Brad, or running back, Braden Ford, is averaging almost 137 yards a game rushing. Quarterback Jamarian Vincent is a dual threat quarterback who averages almost 130 yard, uh, yards a game rushing. So that is a running attack that's very hard to stop. Alvarado with Cardia Collier at quarterback has been really good. He's a dual threat. Yep. Uh, Demarcus uh, uh, Belton at running back. And their receiver is Logan and Hunter, Hunt, sorry, Hunter Barely uh, are really, really good. And to me, it's. How good is this Alvarado defense? Yeah. That's, that's what's going to say. Can that. Alvarado's defense stop this Conley uh, running attack? Because I think Conley is not going to stop Alvarado's uh, running attack and, and, and Cardia Collier throwing it to his receivers, uh, but he can slow him down enough. I think I like Conley in a very close one here. I like Alvarado by two touchdowns. Do you? Okay. I, look, I love what Conley's doing so far, but A, I been taught too many times by them alone you can't trust them when you think they're going good you have to also remember that they're three and oh two of the wins are against three eight teams that are both yes. we thought were going to be better and they have at least shown early little river academy mm-hmm. now to be fair little river academy has played one hell of a schedule but still and then grandview and then them beating laga vista that's a solid win laga vista is one of those teams that's going to classically always be way better in November than they are in September. So yeah. I just, 
I'm not ready to trust Conley. You go into Alvarado and you beat this Indian team that I think is way better than what people understand. Then I will they be were impressed. way better last year. They were way too. better last year. Yeah. And it yeah. started two years ago mm-hmm. when they were five and five and shocked the world and beat Stephenville in a shootout. A, a yeah. Stephenville team that was playing great defense in that stretch. And so I just I don't I don't trust Conley yet, but I do think it could be close. But I I just like Alvarado. I think Alvarado is going to win this game. All right. All right, folks. That's going to do it for this episode. We do appreciate everybody tuning in again next week. One show that rules them all, like Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, I know, g- dorky. But uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments, email the show, Grant and Terry at S2Sport.com. Find us on Twitter at Grant and Terry. Uh, like us on Facebook. Sideline to Sideline. Until week five, he's Grant and Terry, and this is Sideline to Sideline, the 4 edition, brought to you by NeuroGuard Plus on L4 Media. She's queen of the hometown fans. Till I'd seen it all when I was...